I recently rediscovered these interesting measurements I made back in 2011 related to counter RCID ECM. So for the first time I've ever seen, I'll show the ECM signal, the RCID ECM signal interacting with an RCID trigger signal to show the transition from protected to unprotected as the protectee moves farther from the ECM antenna. In other words, it's a real-world measurement of the ECM protection zone, including the warning zone as I defined it in an earlier video. In this experiment, I used a spectrum analyzer to record signals along the center line of an asphalt road at a test range in one meter increments. The experiment used two transmitted signals. The first was an ECM signal represented by several discrete frequencies. The transmit antenna was on the road center line and it didn't move. The second signal was represented the uh, ID trigger signal. It was a single frequency carrier transmitted by an antenna on a wooden tower 160 meters uh, off from the road center line, off to the side. It didn't move also. The trigger signal was offset in frequency from the ECM signal so they could both be measured simultaneously. Now, I'm not trying to jam anything here. I just want to see the real-world signal levels for the ECM and the IED trigger signal as a function of range down the jammer measured at the same time at the same receive antenna. So I connected a spectrum analyzer wirelessly to a laptop and recorded about 20 seconds of spectra down the length of the asphalt test range, 1 meter to 20 meter, 120 meters, relative to the ECM transmit antenna in 1 meter increments. I then used custom software to present a graph of power versus range, measured power versus range, where the power at each range is a looping playback of the spectrum recorded at each range. The idea is to display an overlay of the recording ECM signal and the recorded trigger signal at each point on the test range. And the ECM provides protection as long as the signal power, its signal power is, is higher than the ID trigger signal. Let's say J, 0 dB J to S is the threshold for protection, for argument's sake. The left panel here shows the ECM signal down the length of the test range. The graph shows mean measured power and the signal variation at each point and the yellow line is predicted power. Now let's switch to the trigger signals transmitted from the tower. Since the tower is opposite the road, the distance to the receiver all along the road center line doesn't change by much. In principle, it should be a nearly flat line, which it kind of is, but there is some spatial noise. And as you can see in an earlier video, that's caused by side scatter from trees on the test range. Now let's overlay the trigger signal on the ECM signal and see what the protected range looks like. So we can overlay colored bars, green for safe, yellow for warning, uh, uh, and red for unsafe. Now let's zoom in on the, on the uh, warning zone where the transition between safe and unsafe happens. It's interesting that if the measurements had gone farther, let's say to 200 meters instead of 120 meters, eventually the ECM may become effective again. This depends on the power balance between the ECM and the trigger and also the geometry. And this concludes a presentation of what is, as far as I know, the first and only visualization of the ECM protection bubble using real-world spectral measurements.